Hello you beautiful people and welcome back to Let's Play Tell Me Why. Let us actually do something. The Pious Pelican spot. Stuff. Maybe we can take a crack at these. Moonhag's got to be imprisoned in her lake. I don't know if that Crafty is goblins go here. Important, but I'm just going to Mad Hunter. I'm always on the princess's trail. The wise princess goes in the big wooden house. Of Set course. Those guys down. This one I don't have. Sad face. Back in your pond, big frog. There you go, stalwart moose. We'll let the mangy muskrat have his rock back. Already three or four Ice episodes King ago? Goes in no, the forest. I don't know. Obviously. But a the couple of episodes ago, in his ice but I still want to do it. Why Gold not? Gold Lady locked up in her castle. Here. The secret keeper, hiding secrets in the clouds. And I do wonder... If I'm gonna... Hmm, how are we gonna do the riddles? And I wanted to take a look there. Baby blanket. And I guess that's a blanket which has been talked I about. I she just explained all this to us. Yeah. The very old beaver's repair list. That's the story where the princess's house gets damaged by a storm and the animals help her fix it. Yeah. What did they do to fix it again? Hmm. The beavers fixed the house. Once upon a time in an ancient and deep forest, there lived a wise princess in a big wooden house. One night, a particularly violent storm shook the house. It shook the shingles on the roof and the planks on the walls. In the walls, it even shook the beams on which the house stood, blowing the whole thing near to the ground. The princess hid in a closet, fearing the house would come down in her on her <laughs> in her ear. As she slept in the morning, the house was still standing, but it was badly damaged. The storm had blown the shingles off the roof and planks off the walls and even bent a post upon which the house stood. The first two things she could fix but the last concerned her. What will I do? Despaired the wise princess for though she knew many things she didn't know how to fix the big wooden house. Just then the old bear came by to see if the princess had any trouble in the storm. When he found her nailing planks back into place he said stop princess let me do that for you. I'm happy to do it said the princess but if you want to help with the roof you may. When the pair were done with the roof and the wall they examined the bent support post. I could throw my body against it, said the old bear. I'm very large. He stretched up onto his hind legs or hind legs, being sure that the princess could appreciate how very large he was, then charged straight at the post. He threw his body against it with a impressive thud. The impact moved that post but too far and it ended up bent in the other direction, which is not good. The wise princess decided more precision was needed. She thought then of the very old beaver who kept an excellent, excellently crafted Damn, perhaps she can help. She went looking for the very old beaver and found the industrious animal industry yeah, animal hut at work uh, slapping down mud on a part of the dam that had been blown apart in the storm. Most of the structure was unharmed because the beaver was very good at building things. Prince princess knew she had come to the right place. Beaver, she said. My house was damaged in the storm. Would you help me to fix it? I believe I could do that. Yes, said the very old beaver and she paused the fixing her own then to follow the princess. The very old beaver Examined the big wooden house and nodded. It will be an easy fix, she said. And she set about writing the post with lots of slaps of her trail. When she was done, the wise princess stroked the beaver's head. Thank you, beaver, she said. The wind blew the jingles of the roof and the planks of the walls and even bent the po the, this post. No, thanks to you, I still have a home. Thanks, uh, think nothing of it, said the very old beaver, who returned to work on her own den one again. That winter, the very old beaver grew ill. Very ill. She was not able to fix her den nor to gather food. When the princess found out she said about delivering meals to the beaver. She brought stews of corn and beans and baskets full of bark and twigs from the beaver's favorite espen. One day the wise princess noticed that the beaver's den had begun to fall apart. She set about fixing it and though she was not as talented as the very old beaver, the fix kept the creature warm and dry. Thank you, said the very old beaver. Of course, said the princess. You helped me when the storm blew my house near to the ground. Thanks to you, I still have a home and I'm happy to do the same. The princess continued to nurse the old beaver until the 
day she came to the dam and the forest was still. No birds sang, no branches rustled, no small things skittered within the underbrush. Oh said the princess, staring sadly at the dam, for she knew the old beaver had passed away. Goodbye, my friend. And that is how the very old beaver saved the big wooden house and how the wise princess repaid her time. That's actually sad. She fixed the planks that were blown off the walls. Huh, she fixed the roof shingles. She fixed the broken window. She slapped the post with her tail to right it. She repaired the water leak. She turned the power back on. The very old beaver's repair list. That's the story. Maybe not. She fixed the planks that were blown off the wall. Or not. Actually, I'm not sure. She turned the power back on. There was it, right? Okay, let's go. The roof was fixed, the hole in the wall. Actually, I'm not sure. Actually, I'm not sure. She fixed the planks that were blown off the walls. Wait. Actually, I'm not sure. She turned the power back on. The roof? She slapped the post with her tail to right it. Maybe not. Alright. There we are. Okay. That yeah. was more guessing, but anyway. It must have been rough on Eddie. Yeah, he, um, he doesn't really like to talk about her. Dear Marianne, you cover your ears every time I try to have the, this conversation with you, so I thought I'd had a better chance um, doing this in a letter. I know you don't like saying goodbye, so I'll keep my mel melancholic rambling short and sweet. I want to thank you with all my heart for taking care of me for these past few months. I can't even imagine how exhausting it must have been for you to look after a sick old lady when you also have two small children at home. I know you want me to keep fighting this disease and hoping for recovery, but it's already it's been a great strength of mine to know when it's time to let go and that time has come. I'd like to ask you for one last favor. Please take, take care of Eddie after I'm gone. My poor boy puts on a brave front ever since his father died, but I know he's pain. He would be so much, it would be so much more at peace knowing, what the hell, I would be so much more at peace I ri writing, yeah, uh, reading is, well, anyways, knowing he still has a family. Maybe he could teach the kids how to fish. He loves spending time with them. Thank you, uh, thank you for the warmth and the peace you brought to my life give the kids a kiss for me will you yeah and that is similar to you know the beaver thing right crafty goblins good deeds of course the goblins had to help out the creatures of the forest to pay off their debt to the pelican uh, well what did they do you know i don't really remember what do you remember guys Okay, um, the Grafty Goblin's good deeds. Oh. They removed a thorn from the frog. Actually. I don't know. Um, where? Party, two thieves, new friends, big pawns, mad hunter. Helps friends, the big frog is punished. The ice king. I'm not sure. They removed a thorn from the front. Maybe not. They hugged the princess when she was crying. They gave the stalwart moose a good scratch on the back. They broke open the beehive for the bear. Nailed it. I honestly could not find the story. If you actually um, know which story that was, then you can actually write it down in the comments. I could not, I didn't read all of them, I have to admit. So keep me posted, I just tried it out a little bit. I have to admit that. Okay, anyways. Our lives would have been so different if their friendship hadn't gone to shit. But if you wonder, it is the beer, the princess and the moose.
Uh, if you want to for the Our optional lives thing. Our would have been so different if their friendship hadn't gone to shit. Yeah, the Pelican Crossing is a specialty gift boutique located near the Ocea Glacier, catering to Gastino Channel tourists as well as Delos Crossing locals. We specialize in an assortment of high-quality products from home accessory, accessories and made souvenirs to personalize apparel and local ma locally made art. The Pelican Crossing will be the first store to act as a relay between the buzzing arts and crafting se and crafts and customers. In addition to the wide array of novelty handcrafted products, the consumer will enjoy friendly and acknowledgeable customers from Reki store co-owner Vesa Vecchi or Vicky and up-and-coming artist Marianne Ronan. The business plan is prepared to obtain financing in the amount of $20,000, purchase inventory and to help cover expenses in the first year of operations. In year one, the Pelican Crossing plans to break even and in year two we plan to generate a moderate profit. Working on the executive executive no, summary part of business plan. What do you think, Tessa? Okay, and that means only two more. Holy moly. The old bear's gifts for the princess. I'm totally blanking on that story. What did he give her again? Why don't we open up the book and check? Yeah. Um, this episode, as we have still, so to say, two puzzles to solve. Am I actually stupid? Um, sorry, since A, A this episode is going to be longer than the other ones, but I just wanted to actually fix. Oh, I am so. S All the trying around would have been easier if I just would have taken a look here. Yeah, stupid little me. Anyway, this. Episode is, you know, the old bears gifts for the princess. Uh, only for riddles, but that is just fine with me. And this should be the beer and the princess. This should be it, right? Then I'll try to pay attention since it is at least the same picture, right? I'm totally blanking on that story. Although, what did you give her again. Why don't we open up the book? Okay, uh, read the bear and the princess. Once upon a time, in the ancient and deep forest, the old bear stood on the bank of the river, swiping a salmon on their way to the spawning grounds. Just as he'd got his paw on a particularly fat one, he heard a woman shouting for help. He considered simply eating his salmon, but then she screamed again and he lumbered over to investigate. After a short walk, he found the princess clinging to the top of the tree while the wolf snailed and snapped at the base of the tree. The old bear normally not get in the middle of such a situation. After all, as a fellow predator, he understood the wolves need to hunt. But when he saw the princess, he was struck by her beauty and he knew he had to help. With a great roar, the bear heaved onto his hind legs, raising, rising to his full height. The wolf snapped and snarled in his direction, but the bear roared again and the wolf took off into the tree's tail between his legs. The old bear fell back onto all fours and stared at the princess. She regarded him fearfully. Can come down now, he said, without now how do i know you didn't save me just you could eat me eat me yourself asked the princess i suppose this is a fair question admitted the old bear but i promise i won't eat you the princess had no reason to trust the old bear except that he had kind eyes and so she slowly made her way down to the tree when she reached the ground the bear only watched her and so she supposed uh i'm sorry I'm sorry again. Uh, go on. And so she supposed she was not going to be eaten today. Thank you. She told today is good. The old bear, of course, he said. Can I walk with you back to your home? Of course, said the princess. And so the princess and the old bear walked together through the fort, fort West forest back to the wick big i'm sorry what is up with my reading big wooden house after that day the princess would occasionally find gifts from the bear a fresh caught salmon and for ripe berries and newly bloomed bluebell one spring when a sudden thaw flooded the path of the princess's home the old bear was there and she rode his back across the river the old bear began to think that the princess should be his mate after all she had no mate and she needed one and he could keep her warm and provide her much more suitable den and catfish for her and protect her from wolves she and turn would brush out his fur and pick berries without smooshing half of them and scratch that one part of his back he couldn't reach and with how she took care of the goblins she would be an excellent mother for his cups one day the old bear i think we already uh, went through the story the old bear came with a ring of spruce and asked the princess to be his bride i'm sorry said the princess you are a very good friend and i appreciate all you've done for me but i cannot marry you you're a bear i'm a princess it would never work the old bear was crushed can we still be friends yes we will always be friends 
such princess, but I will never marry you. The old bear and the princess carried on their friendship, and after one year he tried to again to ask her to for his bride, but once again she refused him. Uh, this happened one year later and one year after that, and then finally the princess said, Old bear, you are my dear friend, and I appreciate all you have done for me, but I would sooner, but it, I would sooner you have let me, oh, you have done, but I would sooner you have left me to the wolves than marry you, and that is how it will always be. I have my hands full with the two goblins who live under my house, and they are all I need. That wounded the old bear deeply, but it was finally enough to stop his proposals. They remained friends, and he continued to give her gifts of fresh salmons, berries, and bloomed blue belts. The old bear never again asked the princess to be his bride as much as he might have wanted to, and that is how the princess befriended the old bear. Now, how she refused him. All right, so we have salmon, ripe berries, and blue belts. Check. A newly bloomed bluebell, a handful of ripe berries, uh, fresh caught salmon. Yeah. Nice. Man, he had it bad. Just couldn't let go. Sorry for the note under the door like a prison inmate. UK, I stopped by and rang a couple of times this week, but you didn't answer. I could see the light in the um, hayloft, so I figured you were in but didn't want to talk. I hope I didn't ruin everything. I know, I probably came on kind of strong, but the thing is, I don't know how much to talk to a woman like you. You're strong and kind and you know so much, it's hard for me to know how to keep up. I guess all that went to my head, but I want you to know I got the message and I'm gonna get out of your hair now and there doesn't need to be any bad feelings. We can pass in the street and say hello or not. It's okay. Yes, I noticed your car was leaking, so I put some sealant on there. You might need to take it to the shop though. Let me know if you want me to come with you because sometimes these guys try to rip you off. I'm, if not, not big, no big deal, Sam. So he wanted, which is not bad, you know, he wanted something from her. The crafty goblin's loot. That's from the princess and the two thieves. I drew the original. And I distinctly remember drawing that cake, which is arguably the best part of that illustration. All right, Picasso. Then you probably remember what the goblins stole in that story, huh? Uh... Of course not. princess and the two thieves just four pages bear with me i'm so sorry but this is the game what shall i do right what shall i do if you want to have the bonus puzzles which probably will be hopefully a achievement that is the way to go the princess and the two thieves once upon a time in an ancient a deep forest there lived a wise princess and you can skip these parts by the way in the big wooden house the house was built from the strong wood of the forest and it kept the princess warm and safe the princess was not a native of the forest but she never spoke about where she had come from or it made her cry. She do did not have any uh, cause, you know, um, yeah. Marianne moved out very early. She don't, did not have many friends, but that was how she liked it. The forest was big and deep and many paths led to her house, but not many wizards passed by. The princess has, was happy to be left alone in the big house in the deep forest. She knew that the forest would provide for her, but that, it, uh, that its generosity had to be respected. So she only took what she needed. And for a long time, life was just fine for the princess in the big wooden house. One winter day, when snow blanketed the earth and ice bent the trees low, the wise princess realized that food was disappearing from her house. It was not much at first, only a few fruits and nuts and eggs vanishing during the night. Maybe it birds, she said, or the mice. And for a time the princess was okay with losing some food. For the winter was long and little creatures needed to eat too. But then small items started to disappear as well. Spoons, plates, forks, knife, blankets. It was as if every time she was in one part of the house something disappeared in another room. That can't be birds or mice, said the princess. I think I have a thief. So she went outside to look for traces in the snow and noises in the wind, but there was nothing to be found, nor to be heard. That's strange, said the princess. Maybe the thief is hiding inside my house or under my house. For many days she hunted, looking behind the curtains and under the bed, in the attic and the, and the chimney, behind the poles and under the carpets, but 
but she found nothing. As and as she she searched, food kept on disappearing night after night. I will make a cake, ground the princess a big cake with every egg and fruit and nut I still have, so that I only have one thing to keep my eye on. She spent the whole day making the cake and using everything she had left. The cake she made was so big she could hardly carry it. If I manage to protect the cake, I'll be able to survive the long winter, she, she said. So she added a lot to the oven and she kept the big cake safe inside. But the next morning the lock had been opened and the cake had disappeared. At first the princess cried because that cake was the last of her food until the snow melted. But then she noticed two trails of tiny feet in the spiled, uh, spilled floor and then she followed the tracks to a hidden hatch in the floorboards. That is how the princess realized that two tiny thieves were living under the wooden house right below her feet. Okay, so they stole some flour for the cake, maybe? No. Or not. Fruit? Maybe they took some of the princess's fruit? I'm pretty sure they stole some eggs. Did they steal candy? It didn't say anything about candy, Actually, right? I'm not sure. Hmm. Didn't they take some of the princess's clothes? Okay, let's actually go back to the story. Um, first page. Fruits, nuts, eggs. Fruits, nuts, eggs, spoons and plates, forks and knife. What if they took some spoons? Or not. There we go. That's it. I always wondered where that drawing went. She said it was her favorite, and then one day it just disappeared. You're the best mom in the world, and the prettiest princess. Okay, and that was it. I was hoping to actually find the last piece here. Um, that was actually the goal, but obviously no. Okay, you guys, that then is actually gonna already bring us to the end of this episode. I know it has been a longer episode. I know, I know, I know. I did not plan to do that in one thing through, but I think the this part now is over and we can then go on with the story. Little detour, sorry, but we can go on with the story in the next episode. You know it for now. I really, really thank you for watching. If you guys actually do have an enjoyed this episode then please give me a little thumbs up and subscribe and hopefully and hopefully i see you in the next episode until then have a wonderful day stay frosty stay frosty bye